All right. Uh, this video is going to cover the topic of binary search. Um, so there's going to be six questions I'm going to go over. And then if you have any follow-up questions, please uh, let me know. You could uh, shoot me an email. You could, uh, if you're in my class today, you could raise your hand and just let me know. Um, or you could comment on the video, and I'll be glad to clarify. But this is a topic that over the years uh, some students just seem to struggle with, so I thought this would be a good second video topic uh, for our reviews. So um, again, like I did with the last video, I'm just going to leave this for a second or two. Uh, if you'd like to pause your screen, try to solve the problem, then I'll go over the answer and how I found it. Okay, so looking at the question, a sorted list of numbers that is very important okay so in order for binary search to work you you have to have a list that is sorted now it doesn't have to be numbers it could be letters so it could be a list of uh, numbers that are sorted from largest to smallest or smallest to largest or it could be a list of strings uh, sorted alphabetically from A to Z or Z to A, but it does have to be a sorted list. Uh, you can have duplicates, but things have to be in order, okay? Um, which of the following is closest to the maximum number of list elements that will need to be examined when performing a binary search for a particular value in the list? All right, so the keys here are that our list is 200 elements, all right, and we're doing binary search, okay? I'm gonna jump over uh, to kind of a little notepad thing over here and kind of draw it out because it's easier for me to explain this way. So another way of looking at this would be um, if I wanted to say how many, and I'm gonna do text for a second, all right, how many bits does it take to represent 200 okay well if I go back and think about my binary all right if I jump over here if I have two and I'm gonna look at my answer so two to the fifth okay what is two to the fifth that is 32 okay that's way short of 200 what is two to the eighth okay well, 2 to the 6 would be 64. 2 to the 7th would be 128. 2 to the 8th would be 256. Okay. Then if I jump up higher, those are going to be astronomical. So by doing this, I could say, okay, well, 2 to the 8th, that's pretty close. That's closer to 200 than 2 to the 5th. So if you have a question that's asking you, um, you know, how many items you would need to investigate doing binary search, um, it would be roughly it'd be between seven and eight. Um, eight would be the closest, so that should be the correct answer. Alrighty. Um, another way to do that one, kind of the what I call the hard way, is you could take two hundred, divide it by two, and then you have one hundred. All right, divide it by two, and you got fifty. All right, divide it by two. All right, you've got 25. That's where you kind of get into specifics. Divide it by two, just go to a whole number. Let's just say I'm going to have um, 12 and divide that by two. Okay, now I've got six. Divide that by two. I've got three. Divide that by two. All right, again, I rounded down. I'll round up this time to divide that by two and now I'm down to one and if we count one two three four five six seven that'd be eight possibly eight steps but again we had those odd numbers so again between seven and eight steps um, that's another way to do it but to me this way is a lot quicker okay so our correct answer if we check should be B all right and it is okay question two Again, I will pause for a moment. Try it on your own. Okay, so this is a very similar question. So hopefully you're able to maybe apply one of the tricks uh, we tried last time. 
Um, which of the following is closest to the maximum number of values that will need to be examined when performing binary search for a value in the list? Okay, so again, if I were, I'm new to this little tool. Um, so if I wanted to just get a file new, I need to figure out how to do the eraser. That would be nice, wouldn't it? I'm sure there's one that exists. Um, let me see. I'm spending so much time. Okay, I'll see if I can cover that up. There we go. Okay. And now let me see if I can draw over that. All right, I can. All right. So this time... A little bit more, we've got 10,000. So I'm looking at, okay, well, how many bits does it take to get to 10,000, okay? Well, if I know that eight, we just did a second ago, so if I know two to the eighth is 256, then two to the ninth, all right, I'm going to double that, which would be 5, 12, 2 to the 10th. And you can see where I'm going with this would be 1,024. All right, obviously we keep going 2 to the 11th would be 2,048. All right, common sense should kick in at this point. All right, 5,000 and 10,000 are just insanely high. It wasn't 10, it's going to be 15. Um, obviously, if you have a calculator, um, you can kind of keep going, but to the 11th, or to the 12th would be around 4,000 to the 13th. So you can kind of see, okay, yeah, that would, that would make sense. So the correct answer should be B, again, 15. All right, and that is the correct answer. Okay, all right, question three. All right. The list, list one, is a sorted list of numbers that contain 700 elements. The list, list two, is a sorted list of numbers that contains 900 elements. Let X represent the maximum number of list elements that will need to be examined when performing a binary search for a value in list one, and let Y represent the maximum number of list elements that will need to be examined when performing a binary search for a value in list two, which of the following statements about X and Y is true? Okay, so I'll give you a moment to think about that. I will come back in a second and we'll go over it. Okay, so let's go back to kind of that same concept we were doing. I'm gonna change, if you let me change colors. Let's do kind of a yellow here. All right, so I've got 700, and I've got 900, and I need to know how many bits uh, can be represented. Well, I know, again, 2 to the 8th is 256, 2 to the 9th is 512, 2 to the 10th is 1024. Well, I can't represent 700 or 900 with nine bits, but I can get both of them with 10. Now, it doesn't mean that it's always gonna be the same, but just theoretically, the value of X is approximately equal to the value of Y because both 700 and 900 um, can be represented with 10 bits, um, and there's not that big of a difference when you start looking at that. So the correct answer here should be A. All right, and that's what we get, okay? All right, moving on to question four. Okay, this one's fun. Which of the following lists can a binary search be used for? Um, used to search for an item in the list. Okay, take a moment, look at it. I will pause. Okay, so remember in order to do a binary search, you need a list that's the same data type in an order. 
if I look at one, blue, green, jade, I'm terrible with colors, I'm gonna say mauve, pink, is that in an order I can decipher? Okay, B, G, J, M, P, that is in alphabetical order. I could do binary search, all right, using these strings. This next one, okay, I do have a bunch of duplicates, but five, 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 six, seven, eight, 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 that is in order from least to greatest. Even though I have duplicates, um, that is in order. Next, 10, 5, 3, 2, negative 4, negative 8, negative 9, negative 12. It's all numbers, no duplicates, and I am in an order. I am in order from greatest to least. So all three of these should be eligible for binary search, so D should be our correct answer. All right, and that is our answer. All right, question five. A large number of genetic codes are stored as binary values in a list. Which one of the following conditions must be true in order for a researcher to obtain the correct result when using a binary search algorithm to determine if a given genetic code is in the list? I will pause and then we'll discuss. Okay, so this is one I sort of call, and I don't mean any offense to anyone if you don't get it. I kind of call this a common sense question. So what we know about binary search um, is, again, uh, you need to have the same data type. It needs to be in an order. Um, this says a large number of genetic codes are stored as binary values. Okay, so that's going to be zeros and ones. Which of the following conditions must be true in order for a researcher to obtain the correct result when using, okay. The genetic codes must be converted from binary to decimal numbers. Not necessarily. B, the list must be sorted based on genetic code values. That looks like a winner, but let's look at the other answers. B looks pretty good. C, the number of genetic code values in the list must be to a power of two. No, not necessarily. You could have as many items in the list as you want. One, you know, obviously you wouldn't really need a search, but you could have 10, 11, 12, 200, 2000. Um, doesn't have to be a power of two. C is not the right answer. D, the number of genetic code values must be, no, it could be even or odd. So B is gonna be our correct answer because it has to be sorted, um, and that's the key word, based on the code values, okay? And that's the correct answer. All right, last question in our binary search review. Suppose that a list of numbers contains values negative 4, negative 1, 1, 5, 2, 10, 10, 15, 30. Which of the following best explains why a binary search should not be used to search for an item in the list? Okay. A, the list contains both positive and negative elements. That does not matter. A, strike it out. B, the elements of the list are not sorted. That is a problem. I go from negative 4 to negative 1 to 1, but then 5, 2. That's an issue. B looks like a winner. Let's go ahead and look at it. this one. The list contains an odd number of elements. That doesn't matter. Strike it out. D, the list contains duplicate elements. That doesn't matter. Strike it out. B is the only logical choice because, all right, 5 and 2 are out of order here. So it's not in any order from least to greatest or greatest to least. So B. Okay, so that concludes our uh, quick little review on binary search. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, if you have any follow-up questions, please reach out. Let me know.